Okay, seriously, I needed my gladiator armor on today because I have been fighting the good fight over on Facebook. So um, I got a lot of trolls today asking me what Kamala Harris deserves or why she deserves to be president with no concept whatsoever of, you know, what, you know, what Trump needs to do to up his game to become president. You know, he actually was um, fired from his job, you know, in the apprentice sense. He was released from duty and he doesn't believe it. And he literally committed treason, which is the highest crime in the land. So treason is, you know, a constitutional, you know, uh, crime. And, you know, the punishment is, you know, outlined in the Constitution. You can read it. You know, I can cite my source, you know, and um, he keeps digging his hole deeper and deeper and deeper. You know, his crimes against, you know, humanity, the nation, you know, the government, you know, civil crimes, all the crimes that he literally has committed. I remember him committing crimes in 1978 as a little child in New York City. You know, he literally had, you know, the black tax on apartments. You know, he would, you know, jack up the price so black people couldn't rent them, you know, and he went to court for that because he literally was creating um, a civil rights crime you know, he, you know, that was illegal, you know, they created, um, you know, e like, people are equal, you know, equal, right? like, um, like, literally, um, I mean, I know Governor Pence, uh, you know, made civil rights, like, go out the window in Indiana when he made it legal to refuse service to gay people for, for wedding cakes and, restaurants and things like that. But, you know, he, um, you know, that wasn't okay either, honestly. <laughs> but, um, you know, but Trump was, you know, not renting to black people back then. So people are like, he's not a racist. He only hates race, you know, like uh, equality for people of different races. <laughs> he's not a racist. He only wants to deport all of the immigrants. Um, and he keeps saying immigrants. He doesn't say illegal immigrants. He keeps saying immigrants. So, um, and if you notice, he prefers certain immigrants because he marries certain immigrants. It's only immigrants, um, you know, of like the Latin persuasion who he calls rapists and murderers. And, um, I, oh, I hope that wasn't a stop word. I don't, I don't know if I'll get dinged for that, but, um, grapists and herders. Um, but he, you know, he like, I mean, like, where are these people saying, um, the quiet part out loud? It's not okay. It's horrifying, you know, and, you know, he literally is already laying the groundwork for, um, another insurrection. I don't know how he thinks he's going to get past, like, the actual commander-in-chief. Um, like, like, I mean, he's, like, literally demeaned all veterans everywhere. Recently, again, people keep saying, no, that was debunked. No, that was debunked. It was on camera, um, like, in front of everybody, way back when he did it to McCain, where he said he was a loser for getting caught as a POW, which um, was outrageous, horrible, and, he, I mean, getting caught as a POW is not for losers and suckers or whatever he said. It was despicable what he said. So... Um, you know, veterans everywhere should be um, outraged. You know, I am seeing a lot of people who voted for Trump last time who are saying I'm voting blue this time. So I'm hoping, um, you know, I'm encouraged by that, but I really put on, like, my gladiator armor on, on uh, Facebook today and just, like, tried to deflect, tried to respond 
um, I got a lot of comments saying that I was being negative, which um, I guess it just made me laugh because I was like, how am I being negative by responding to people, you know, telling me that I was being negative? Um, I did say, and I don't know, if, um, I hope people are watching, but, you know, you know, there, I, there are people who are literally saying, I have to vote for Trump because I'm pro-life. Well, let me ask you this question. If you are pro-life, um, the new laws are not supporting prenatal care. They're not supporting aftercare. They're not supporting nutrition. They're not supporting anything pro-child whatsoever. They're not supporting pro-human. So how is that pro-life? That's not supportive. That's not, to me, a value of any kind. And the new laws that have created, um, you know, anti-abortion or pro-life initiatives are literally denying medical care in, in case of miscarriage. So if you have if you have ever had an ectopic pregnancy or like a, a, a pregnancy complication, you literally could be left to die instead of receiving life-saving care for you or the, the baby. So that I completely do not understand. Um, I, you know, it's shocking to me that anybody would support that kind of legislation at all, I do understand, I understand that you, I understand thinking, okay, I'm pro-life, but I absolutely have no, no understanding about not providing any medical care whatsoever for miscarriage or for um, ectopic pregnancy. You know, that's outrageous. And now they're saying women you know, if you are a woman, they are saying if you are pregnant, you are not allowed to leave the state. Well, when did this become a police state? That sound like that doesn't sound outrageous. This is legislation that's being introduced state by state by state. Now, allowing it to become state by state by state, like this is like the gulag. You know, this is like this is a police state. If you are a female, you are being controlled. You know, if you, like, honestly, if, and your husband doesn't even get control over that. So that is, you know, the government. And there is legislation that has been introduced to monitor your child's menstrual cycle. So if you, I mean, how creepy is that? And these people are introducing legislation for child marriage. So, so... They want to enforce child pregnancy, but they don't care if an adult made them pregnant. So to me, you know, I, I just, I don't understand that. I mean, how are you not outraged about an adult making a child pregnant and you know, they, they're legislating it under, you know, like down to age 10 in case they get their, their menstrual cycle at age 10. How is this possible? This is, this is literally a science fiction novel to me. And I cannot imagine how humiliating that is for like young girls to have to report when their cycle is, when their menstrual cycle is, to the government. Uh, it's outrageous. It's disgusting. And people are upset that there might be tampons in the boys' bathroom when girls have to use the boys' bathroom if the other bathroom's being cleaned. Or if you're playing a sport and, you know, like for swimming, like if you're, you know, going to another school and, you know, competing for gymnastics or basketball or swimming, you use the other bathroom. Like, how, how is that not known to the world? Like, people compete in sports all the time. Or, you know, I mean, how do you not understand this? I, you know, they went berserk 
people use, you know, the bathroom at home and share a bathroom with their parents. Like, is it really like psychologically traumatizing to have these products in the bathrooms? You people are bananas, completely bananas. This has been an outrage. I need like, um, well, I don't drink, but geez, if I ever did drink, this would be a good time to have a drink. This is insane. This is insane what's going on in this country right now. And there are people literally who are like, well, he's my pick. Do any of your values align with this man? Do you literally have values that align with this man? He publicly, he publicly has stated that he is physically attracted to his daughter when his daughter was like 12 years old. He literally said that out loud. He literally appears in court documents on, uh-oh, what is that? Um, hi, I see people on here. I'm having, I'm having a, a rage fest. I'm having an angry saying all the quiet parts out loud part. And people are like, you're mad at Trump. You should be saying nice things. Well, he's not a nice man. This man is not a nice man. And so I'm going to say it out loud. This man took out an ad against the Central Park Five who were completely innocent. And I honestly, I, I, I remember when this happened. He took out an ad in the paper to you know, condemn them. It kind of was like the back then version of cyberbullying. And so um, they went to prison. The, these guys went to prison. They did absolutely nothing wrong. They were completely innocent and they were later exonerated, but they spent years in prison and Donald Trump contributed to it. And nothing happened to him. There was no retaliation. There was no compensation whatsoever. So this man is a terrible human being. He's bankrupted company after company after company. He has left businesses who, construction businesses. If you are in construction and you do a gigantic job, such as a, sky, a skyscraper, imagine you have your business. Imagine your business is um, whatever your business is, you have a construction company or an architecture firm or whatever your business is, and you work for Donald Trump and he stiffs you for hundreds of thousands of dollars and he never pays you and you never get compensated because he's such a shyster. He's such an unscrupulous, terrible human being and you just get the shaft and never paid. Um, he literally cannot campaign in certain cities because he has not paid the bills from the last election. And that's your guy. That's your guy. And you're a business owner. He has literally, um, he, the Project 2025, those are his advisors. Those are the people he wants to be his cabinet. These people who wrote this game plan. This is his long range plan for his election. I know he goes off script, but this is his plan for the election. And um, uh, he said, A, he did not know any of the people. Then B, he appears in photographs with the people on his private jet, by the way, which was owned previously by Epstein. Um, so lie, lie, lie. And then he then said he did agree with the policies. So lie. So which lie do you believe? And he's a lying liar who lies. So, um, so those are some opinions that I have on that. Um, so if you support Trump, what key values does he possess that you share with him? Are you a liar or a liar or a liar or a liar? Um, are you a racist or a racist or a racist or a racist? Um, are you, do you stiff people on the bill? So are you a thief or a criminal or um, you don't follow through on contracts? Um, 
do you bribe people? That's one of his values. Um, do you cheat on your wife? Is that one of your values? Um, you know, do you spy on underage girls at the Miss America pageant like he did? Do you, do you assault women? Um, yeah, I'm curious because he dug himself a hole so deep. And they're like, well, let me ask you, what does Kamala Harris bring to the table? Well, she doesn't have to bring anything to the table. He's so deep in the hole at, that she's well above him. You know, people said she got where she got on her back. Well, how does, how does that work if you are elected to your position? You know, how, how does that work? Did she, like, sleep with every voter? And if you are a female suggesting she got to that position, is that how you got your position? Answer that question. Is that how you got your position? Because if that's what you think, that must be one of your values is sleeping with people to get to your position. So anyway, those are some thoughts that I have for the day. And, um, uh-oh. Uh, anyway... Uh, yeah, I'm reading at the top. Um, so, yeah, that's my rant for today. Hi, Shaq. Um, hi, people. Hello. I'm just having some thoughts for today. Yeah, I had a lot of people say she wasn't black. Um, so mathematically speaking, if we want to break that down, th they like it. They, they want her to be black so they can discriminate against her, but not be black so she can't have the black vote. So mathematically speaking, she is half Indian, a quarter black, and a quarter um, Irish. So mathematically, um, she is only a quarter black, but appearance wise um she is maybe a coffee latte color and and guess what you don't get to decide if she's black or not um and she is beautiful and black white or in between doesn't matter um you're calling her a DEI. So you know why DEI occurred in the first place? Because the old boys club was keeping people under their thumb and only hiring old boys. <coughs> so the DEI literally happened because of discrimination. So they hired other people who literally were qualified because they were hiring not qualified people for other jobs in the first place. So you can say DEI like it's a dirty word, but it literally even the playing field. And yet mathematically, um, old white guys are still making more money for equal jobs. So we're not getting equal pay for equal work even now. So stop saying DEI like it's a bad word and start paying people equally um, across the board. That's, a, that's another opinion that I have. So I'm not bitter, I just sound bitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bitter. I might be bitter. Um, uh, I might be. I might. Uh, uh, anyway, maybe. Um, maybe some a magnesium bath <laughs> would help me chill out a little bit. But I had people poking me with a pitchfork all day about how Trump <coughs> was this great human being, and he is not. He is in no way a humanitarian. He does what's best for him. And if you think he's going to do what's best for you, you are sadly mistaken. So have a great day. And um, I'm going to, oh, I see some, I see some stuff. I see like a rainbow. 
And, um, I, uh, so anyway, that did brighten my day because, and I did get some private messages from people who are like, I'm not allowed to say this on my page because of my job or, oh my gosh, like, thank you for saying what I couldn't say or like, you know, so I did get some of that. Um, I definitely, some of my favorite people on here too, there's a, there's a young guy, um, I can't, I can't remember his name, but it's like D-A apostrophe, um, I'm trying to remember his name, but he is a, like a medical student at Penn State, and he speaks about politics so well because he doesn't get mad like I do, and he says things so clearly and explains them so politely and I get really mad, but I think he is more um, calm, cool, and collected than I am. And I do share a lot of his posts in my page. So if you if you follow me, I share a lot of his stuff. And then there's another kid, um, or grown up, but a lot younger than I'm named Harry. And Harry also is very good, but he pokes more fun at them and is a little more judgy sounding than the other guy um but they do a lot of political posts where they don't get as mad as I do so um but the, they but they point out um certain things in the right or wrong category maybe um but my thing um I um I'll go back to the the my my own aunt said about Kamala Harris getting where she did, you know, on her back, you know, and I just, I just got furious. I just got furious because seriously, you know, like literally the woman, you know, went to a prestigious school. She got her uh, law degree. She passed the bar. You know, they keep saying she didn't pass the bar, but she passed the bar the second time, which is very common. It's not uncommon to pass the bar on the second time. And I, um, you know, like, and they, and they keep saying DEI, DEI. Well, that didn't pass her classes. That did not pass the bar. And and like and like I said, like literally DEI was was like created to even the playing field with like the old boys club. Like, you know, Trump got his um college admission bought and paid for. Um <coughs> you know, he came from a wealthy family. Like if you think it was easy for her at that time in history to get where she got no, it was like dancing, you know, in heels backwards. You know, she had to work for what she got. You know, she, you know, and she got to like the second highest, you know, position in the land. You know, she literally was the cream that rose to the top. You know, she was a senator. And they're like, well, what are her qualifications? She is not qualified for this. He literally stole from cancer patients. He literally created a like a fraudulent college, you know, that ripped off college students, you know, charged them tuition and they had a bogus, you know, degree. And he bankrupted a, a casino, like casinos rigged the system to win and he bankrupted a casino. He literally, you know, I mean, he literally was in completely incompetent in everything that he did. And they're like, he's a businessman. He's so much more qualified than she is. No, the hell he's not. Not in any way. Not in, like, not in the least. And they're like, well, I mean, like, seriously, are you kidding me? This man is, like the joke of the nation and then to say like all of his charges are trumped up like no like if I mean that man like that man committed treason against this country and people were killed that day and 
He joked about Nancy Pelosi's husband being attacked with a hammer. Like, I just, I just do not, what just happened? There was like a little noise that happened. I have no idea what that was. But he just, um, I don't, anyway, I have no idea what's happening. So anyway, I hopped on here live, um, mostly because it's not letting me record the videos. It keeps playing music over me. So I hopped on here live to do that. Mostly I just do like short little videos, but I got on a, I got on a, um, I don't know, a bend or whatever you want to call it. So anyway, that's my, I'm mostly mild mannered. I'm a Reiki practitioner. I try not to get like too angry. Um, I even did, I had like a clearing session. Um, if you're, if you're woo in the least, you understand what that means. But my friend Carol was like, let's pull off some of that um, energy from other people and let's smooth you out and la 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 but I'm getting a lot of um, you know that fight from other people and so it's made me a little feisty so I hope everybody has a, a great evening I hope I'm able to fall asleep tonight I might take some magnesium and calcium to see if that helps like chill me out a little bit but um, I uh I hope you're all having a good time. I should have, I can't really see the comments because of my, I have like reading glasses with a prism in them and then these are my bifocals. So I don't know if you have something to say about this. I would um, enjoy your feedback unless you're an angry troll. <laughs> I do, I do have an angry troll. Someone, I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it. Like uh, trolls make me kind of laugh because um, one of them said to me, um, I was too ugly to, um, I was too ugly to be a Trump supporter. And that just made me laugh because it, di it didn't, it was incongruent. It didn't, um, I didn't think that followed. I was like, huh, I, that wasn't something I saw coming. So I, so it just made me laugh. I was like, oh, okay. I, I didn't think that was a thing, but um, I, what can you do? So anyway, I hope that everybody has a great evening and um, I am looking forward for myself um, to, I am looking forward for myself to, um, I'm going to vote blue. I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. And I did join a really cute group that was, that has little funny sayings for Tim Walls. I mean, this man has a 24 year military record and he is a hunter, but they're, they're like, Tim Walls saved like you know, part of the muffin for you, or Tim Walls holds the door at Quick Trip for you, and they're very funny, they're very funny and charming, because he, but, because the, uh, the thing is, too, that the guy is a master wordsmith, he is very good at the comeback, and so is Harris, Harris is very good also at the, I mean, she doesn't, um, uh, I would say butter does not melt on her lips she is snappy so um I just <laughs> I don't know that was but I just definitely like she is um she is a wordsmith too she just is she says what she means she means what she says and she is eloquent and I um you know obviously you know, and they were trying to put down, like, they were trying to say, like, you know, Trump went to a better school, and it was like, yeah, and he, and he, his teacher said he was, like, ridiculously stupid, you know, they, they weren't like, yeah, and he was top of his class, or, you know, whatever, they, you know, they, like, they described him as a bully in school, you know, and then, the bone spur thing. Now, I am not going to claim I could have been in the military. I had terrible knees. I, um, you know, I had flat feet. I could literally not have been in the military, you know, but, um, you know, the man is a draft dodger. So I don't know what his beef is with veterans. 
you know, my thing with veterans is my grandfather fought in World War II and he got a Purple Heart. He was shot um, down in a plane and he literally had like a metal um, piece in his arm where his elbow was shattered. And, you know, at that time, I think that that was like a revolutionary medical treatment um, in the war. They were literally... Um, in World War II, I think the Special Olympics uh, were kind of created for rehabilitation for some of the injured veterans. But um, he did survive the war, and he did. Um, they did save his arm from being amputated. But um, and my other grandfather on my father's side was killed in the war. He died um, of gangrene, and and they they um, wanted to amputate his leg, but it was too late. So I had, um, you know, two war heroes in my family. And then my uncle Todd was in the Air Force um, for his service. And my father and mother were both Army veterans during Vietnam. So to me, when he says that, you know, he literally called McCain a loser and a sucker. And he said, I wouldn't have gotten caught. Well, of course he wouldn't have gotten caught because he dodged the draft. You know, like comparing yourself to that, you know, if he had been the least bit, um, I mean, ser like seriously, like degrading a veteran who was a war hero and saying, well, I wouldn't have gotten caught, like he was a loser and a sucker, is outrageous. It's despicable. It's horrifying. And then he like doubled down on it. And there was a woman who was like a billionaire who got the Medal of Freedom instead of, um, like basically she bribed it. Like she gave him money and got the, the prize. And again, he put down the veterans and people were today were trying to tell me that um that wasn't true that was debunked and it was on film and I saw it with my own eyes it was not debunked there's no debunking and then they tried to argue that Clarence Thomas um you know that that was debunked and you know that was on um you know the proceedings um you know, the, the hearings, um, oh gosh, I, I, I wish I could cite my source, but I'm getting too tired for my day. But I was arguing and arguing and arguing all day. And they're like, well, why aren't you lifting her up instead of putting him down? And it was like, well, I was responding to people's attacks li like all day long. So, um, but, uh, you know, and they were like, well, what are her qualifications? And I literally, like, enumerated her, like, like all of these things that she had done. And they were like, that didn't answer my question. And I was like, well, like, I mean, she, she literally, I, I mean, he was a game show host. What are his qualifications? And, um, you know, I mean, she had, like, all of this relevant experience. And... Um, but she's less qualified, you know, so for them, you know, um, oh gosh, I, and I can't remember right now the name of the guy. I'm too tired to do the, the research, but I was a librarian for 20 years. So I really am a cite your source girl. Um, but, uh, oh gosh, what state was he from? Was he from West Virginia? But there was, there was a, I think it was a senator. I, I just am, I'm wearing out. But he called her the DEI hire. And he was like, they could have come up with somebody else. And he was like, literally like, why didn't they come up with anybody else? And she's the vice president. Well, anybody else would have jumped the line, you know? So, and, and he called her the DEI hire. And it was like, well, you got the old boy golden ticket. Like, shut up. You know, like it was misogynistic, it was racist, and you know, it discounted where she was in her place in line. So I just, I, you know, I'm tired of men. I'm tired of 
old white men degrading everybody else. You know, it's just like, you don't get an opinion in my, in my opinion, they don't get an opinion. And, oh, I got, wow, that's cool. Um, I was like, what are those noises? And I see like 290 little things there. So anyway, so that's my thing for, for today. And I wish I could remember those, those other people's, um, names, Harry and I'm going to learn his name because I hop on and listen to him. He's a Penn State, I think it's Penn State, college student. And he just speaks about politics so well. And he is so clear and to the point. And um, he's, he's, he's just awesome. But I will hop on again and rant and rave. But my my excitement for this election, I... You know, and when Obama, um, I was in Indiana when Obama was running, and I honestly was going to vote for Nader. I was going to vote for Nader because in Indiana, it was a red state, and I thought, well, I could literally vote for Nader, and I know he's not going to win, but I could literally vote for Nader. And my parents, um, my mom lives in Wisconsin. My father and stepmother live in New York. And my father and stepmother voted for Hillary in the primary. But, um, you know, Obama won the, the, um, the vote for the party. And my dad was like, it's too important. It's too important. It's too important. And I lived in the county, um, I lived in Lake County, Indiana, and it was right outside Chicago. And the that is the most diverse county in Indiana, or it was when I lived there. Outside of, and Marion County was also pretty diverse, but the rest of this, the rest of the whole state is like farmland. So I waited. I early voted, but I waited. I waited to vote like eight hours, like eight hours, in there. And um, there was a huge initiative to get out the vote or rock the vote or however they put it. And um, Indiana um, went blue. Indiana did go blue for Obama. And um, it was, uh, it was awesome, you know, and I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people are like, he did not do enough. But seriously, like that man changed history. There are people who said horrible, despicable things about them who um I'm trying to say this politely. Someone called Michelle Obama a gorilla and not okay disgusting, terrible human being. And they said that she, that the outfit that she wore, it was, it was sleeveless, like my outfit today. And they said, not only did they call her that, but um, they also said that it was, oh, I, it was very unbecoming and very shocking and very horrible. And then Melania, or is it Melania? Um, oh, I'm sorry. His, then, like, his wife, Trump's wife, is, like, naked in a magazine. But she's the most respectful, glorious, wonderful first lady ever. And it was like, no. No, she's not. No, uh-uh. No, she's not. You do not get to say that Michelle Obama, in a tank top or sleeveless dress is completely undignified and call her a name um a, ra a racist name um and then say melania trump is like this glorious beautiful princess when she was um in inappropriate you know it just it just was not it wasn't okay, you know? I mean, your racism is showing when that happens. It's, your racism is showing. And um, 
and then you lose all credibility with me. That's just, you know, then you just don't get my, my vote. Or you don't get my um, attention anymore. So I just, um, I just, uh, anyway, I just, uh, and people are like, well, we can agree to disagree, but that's, that's a, a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker. That's not a, that's not a, we agree to disagree. If you, um, I mean, like, A, they literally passed a law to say people are equal, you know, they, you know, they, they had to pass the law, um, but they shouldn't have to pass the law for you to understand that people on this earth should not be afraid to call the police or leave their home or, um, there was a woman, there literally was a woman who went to a store a clerk said she shoplifted something. She did not shoplift something. And a police officer shot her dead over shoplifting, which she never did. So, um, yeah, so I, it's, you know, I mean, people shouldn't have to be afraid of that here, you know? I mean, we have to do better and everybody has to speak out against this stuff because like literally, um, as far as racism goes, like literally if you're the victim or the target of that, like you don't get a voice because you can say it all day and nobody's listening. So I, um, I guess I challenge you to speak up if you, if you get to have a voice, you know, I mean... I don't know. I mean, I, in fact, you know, speaking of being a target, I was called the N word. Um, and I don't, I don't say the N word out loud personally, because, um, when I was a little kid, I didn't know any better. And I said that I went N knocking. Um, that was the word for ring and run in my town. And I said to my dad, I said, I went and knocking. And my dad looked at me and he went pale. And he said, what did you say? And I said, I went and knocking. And my dad asked that again. And he said, do not ever say that again. And he kind of like grabbed my arms and he I never, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen that look ever again in my whole life. And he called my mother. My parents were divorced. He called, he, we were in New York City and my mother lived in Jefferson, Wisconsin. And he called my mother and he said, do you know what your daughter said? And, and I didn't hear her answer on the phone. And then he said what I said. And I heard her yelling and I knew I was in trouble and my brother also got lectured because in case he had heard it, my father wanted to make sure that he learned his lesson too. And my mother called all of my friends and they all got yelled at. And my mother told all of my friends' parents that they never wanted to hear, you know, that word again. And everybody got in trouble. And I suspect my friends' parents used that word, honestly, but they probably got in trouble for ring and run and not the N word. But, um, you know, I never, I, I, you know, honestly, it scares me to say that word, you know, but it rolls off people's tongues like water here. Um, you know, I just, I, you know, it's awful, you know, so, and people, for a while, I did not hear it out loud. And then when Trump came in office, it was like, oh, we have permission. You know, your racism is showing. So anyway, I just, um, yeah, so I've been ranting for a while. Hi, hi, Mari. Hi. Um, hi, I hope everybody's having a good time. And 
um, it's not a good time. <laughs> it's kind of a crappy, a crappy conversation to be having, but it is alarming. It's, it is alarming to me because it used to be, honestly, it used to be, there was a time in, on this planet when Republicans were respectable people, when Republicans had values, when they had values and, um, and they respected veterans, you know, and, um, and honestly, you know, and the, and the pro-life issue, if they were pro-life, it was understood, like if you had a miscarriage that they would handle it and take care of you. It wasn't understood that you had to die, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's insane. This is insane. This is insane what this has come to. You know, and then J.D. Vance's stance on some of these things, he actually said, um, well, I, the thing with his wife, you know, he's like, oh, I like my wife. But basically he said, like, every other, you know, person of color is, you know, not important to him. And or however, I don't remember exactly how he put it, but, um, you know, he's, and the, and the thing about, like, um, like not understanding that people are more than one race, like his children are half Indian and half, you know, Caucasian. So I don't understand how he had so much trouble with Kamala Harris, but, um, you know, he, his wife was discriminated against at the convention at the Republican national convention. So, which is very sad so, and I don't, un I honestly don't understand how she puts up with that. I, I, I'm, this is my cat. Bob is, Bob wants to, here, come on, you can, you can sit there if you want to. So, um, he, uh, he, uh, okay, this is Baba Ganoush. So Baba Ganoush also is not a fan of Trump. He is a much bigger fan of Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. So, um. Yeah, so he's a good boy. Bob is very old, by the way. Um, Bob is pretty old. He's about 18. So he's been with me a long time. And Bob, um, Bob, just so you know, uh, I was the answer to the Lord's Prayer. My friend Shauna prayed. Um, she was moving, and Bob was an outside cat in her neighborhood. And his owners moved away. And she, um, she told me, she said, you know, I've been praying someone would come and take this cat. And, and, um, I, I came and took him. <laughs> so, so I was, um, his, his little person. And then my other cat fell from the sky. He was, um, he was living under the dumpster in the library where I worked. He was in, he was living like basically under the trash dumpster and then the mom went to move them and he fell into the big light well that um the library had like a light well for the basement and he fell into the light well which was about 18 feet deep and he got a little concussion so <clears throat> the mom moved the cat so the mom wasn't around anymore and falafel is the other cat's name and he um, you know, got injured. So I took him to the vet with his little concussion. And then he was too young to be away from the mother. So the vet, who was a Serbian guy, um, yelled at me. And he said, um, you know, he shouldn't be away from his mother. And I said, well, there was no option there. And he told me to keep him warm. And I had to feed him with a bottle but I, I kept him in my bra. <laughs> so my little baby falafel, I had him in like my little, I had him like, like snug in there. So, and then, and then when he was old enough to like run around, he wouldn't stay in there <laughs> anymore. But Bob, um, this cat here, when he figured out that he was living in the house with us, um, he looked at him and he looked at me and you could tell that Bob, um, uh, 
was like, well, who's going to take care of this thing? And then Bob kind of did. Like, even though he's a boy cat, he really kind of um, took care of him. It was, it was not what I expected, honestly. I, I kind of was worried about him being male, but he, he liked him. He liked his, his little sidekick. So they are very good, like a bonded pair. So anyway, that's the, that's how that worked. Anyway, I, um, I hope my story today, my, my love song of Kamala Harris, uh, was, uh, a good story for you. I'm going to hop off and um, I hope you have a good day. Um, if you have interesting things to share about the election, I would love to hear it. And um, I do, I am, I, do, I will say this too. One more, one more parting thought. I am honestly concerned that, um, you know, after all the concern about Biden's mental decline. You know, Trump is having these weird pauses and these weird, um, you know, of course I should talk, these weird looping, like looping thoughts and and sort of like incoherent kind of uh, soliloquies or diatribes or whatever you want to say. I mean, he definitely always had the you know, windmill cancer and this hurricane, I'm just going to move the line over here and the storm's going to move or, you know, or what he said about the wildfires. Remember his wildfire story where he thought they could, um, I don't remember exactly what he said about the wildfires, but he thought the wildfires could be put out in some unusual way that um, he thought was smarter than the, than the actual, you know, firefighters thought up and he was wrong and he was incorrect um his theory was you know not right so anyway so um so uh yeah that's my story yeah bob discredited his theory so but um let's hope that the national weather service stays around because Hurricanes do happen, and it would be nice to track them and keep people safe. And my, um, my Paul, um, this is like a long story, but my Paul was a, a, like a space scientist who worked on satellite imagery. So I hope it sticks around to save people and keep track of those things and help evacuate people in time. And, um, you know, that's all I have for tonight. So good luck, everybody, and take care.